So what we'll do, first of all, is just quickly set the stage about Obamacare. Go over some things that you all might have forgotten, but just to keep fresh in your mind what it is that we, we cannot have. We cannot have this. It will change the, the fabric of our country, and there are ways to stop it. So we are pleased to have Ben Strusan from Americans for Prosperity, and also you will recognize him from KSCB, the voice of Texas. So he's here tonight. He's going to talk a little bit about Obamacare, and then we will talk about, um, introduce this gentleman who's on the on the, the picture, it's not Ted Cruz though, I, I don't want to disappoint you. Brandon Craven is a rock star in his own right. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about this and then um, we have some people who want to sing Brandon's praises and then he's gonna talk for a few minutes about what he's done on state sovereignty, what he did last session, his run for current office, all kinds of interesting things. But right now, please help me welcome Ben Strusan. Thank you very much, and uh, kudos to you for and, and all the members of your organization and all the volunteers for doing such a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, I, I have been fortunate over the years to uh, work with and be associated with, help out where I could as AFP chairman here in Texas with uh, a lot of Tea Party groups and bar none, bar none. Texas Patriots PAC is one of the most able, well-led, most effective Tea Party organizations in the entire country. Of course, it's, uh, I think, you know, one of the reasons why, I'll, I'll let you make your announcement later, but um, certainly uh, a lot of people beat a path here uh, uh, to uh, have an opportunity to uh, talk about a lot of the issues that we care about. Uh, can everybody see this chart here? This is kind of the bad news chart. Uh, you'll notice that um, this is a map of the United States, and um, well, uh, red is bad in this case, all right? And blue is, is better, in fact, it's good. Blue has got minus signs here. You'll notice how blue is sort of uh, congregated in some of these northeastern states that typically vote, well, blue. And then uh, red is uh, in sort of the other states. Well, th these are premium increases across the country that uh, the Insurance Company Institute is estimating uh, will occur as a result of the implementation of Obamacare. And happy Obamacare Day, everybody. Uh, it's just, um, it's, it's sad that we got here. Uh, I will say this, we have to do everything we can to support uh, members of Congress, be they in the House or the Senate, that are leaving it all on the line in order to stop the implementation of this law. We have to support their activities, their actions, because as you know, they're in a very lonely place. <laughs> they, they don't get a lot of support. And I, we know some of them very well. They have the courage of their convictions, but they need to hear from us what a great job that we believe that they are doing. And they need to hear from us that we're behind them and that we're willing to support them to the bitter end. And, and so I, I think that uh, the big message about make them listen and what we're trying to accomplish tonight and over the next several weeks is to force a resolution to this, uh, it's not even a crisis, it's you know, a, you know, funding debate over the federal government. We want to force a resolution that accomplishes our object, uh, objectives. And lest anyone has any doubts the objective is to eliminate, repeal, defund, delay, or otherwise stop Obamacare. And, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of argument over tactics going on in Washington, D.C., but I think at the end of the day, uh, we, we need to make sure that the people that stand up and put their careers on the line and, and are doing the work of the American people particularly Republicans from Texas don't have their legs cut out from under them by uh, others up there that are so willing to settle so easily. 
So that, that's why they need to hear from us. And, um, you know, the government is shut down, big deal. Okay? I, I mean, you know, it's 30% it's of discretion, it's discretionary spending, it's 30% of the federal budget, it's 30-40% uh, of total payroll. I don't even know the criteria for being essential and non-essential. You know, if you're a veteran and you need medical care, the VA hospitals are open, the do VA doctors are there. Yeah, it may take a while longer to get your claim processed. Of course, it's backed up for a year anyway, would you even notice? But, you know, it's, 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 it's not that Im important to have the government open and running. It's much more important to walk away from this battle without folding like a cheap suit, like without folding like Republicans typically do in the House of Representatives. And I just, you know, the president was on television today and he was claiming that this huge demand for Obamacare, all the exchanges, millions of people signed up, the exchanges crashed, uh, they, they couldn't handle the traffic. And, and the president is, is making this argument on television that this proves that this law is so popular with the American people and this just proves that the American people want this Obamacare coverage. And, and in my mind, I, I just feel like the only thing it really proves is that if you give away something for free or heavily subsidized, everybody will buy it. And you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me that the media continues to let this, well, maybe not so amazing, that they continue to let this guy off the hook. We know that they're in the tank for, for the president for a number of reasons, uh, but we have our own avenues now, and despite the fact that we're, we're uh, batting against the wind or we're sailing against the wind in this case against a very biased media, it's no substitute for getting an articulate message out there. And quite frankly, the Republican message has been very muddled. Look, we all know the basic flaws. The software's not ready, privacy's not maintained, the incomes are not gonna be verified in order to get subsidies. Um, for the most part, what's gonna happen is that insurance in the United States is gonna split into two camps. One camp, like Medicare, Medicaid, and the exchanges will be heavily subsidized by the federal government and the doctors that are being compensated um, from those insurance policies are going to be paid a fixed fee and they're not going to like the payments they get so they're not going to want to take on a lot more patients and the rest of us the other 150 million americans that are under health care provided by our employers are going to pick up the difference for the unreimbursed care that uh, the subsidized people currently are not paying. Uh, and so what will happen is that gap will rot widen over time. It'll get substantially worse. And uh, at some point, we'll reach a breaking point and that it, it only goes as far as the taxpayers are willing to pay. And so uh, the American people have shown uh, quite a tolerance for taxes. And that, that's the unfortunate thing, but, you know, sooner or later, uh, you know, the, the tree breaks. Sooner or later it breaks. So let, let me just um, kind of uh, get to the end, and then I'll go to the political dynamics or however you want to handle this, uh, Julie. Um, the federal government, we know, is paying less than the health care costs for uh, the federally subsidized programs. Um, and the big mistake, the big great liberal fallacy uh, in the Obamacare argument is that liberals believe that paying less for something is the same as costing less. Nothing that has been done over the last five years, save a recession, has reduced the cost of medical in medical <coughs> services. Nothing has been done by the federal government to reduce the costs of a heart bypass or cancer treatment or any of the other medical services that we have come to depend on uh, in this country and in our society. All that Obamacare does 
is shift the cost away from reimbursement by the federal government onto uh, people that have private insurance, including people that are covered by their employers, and force employers to pay more to cover everybody else. And when you look at the way these things are distributed amongst the states and the premium increases, you'll notice that up in that blue area up there, the reason why the costs are, are actually down under Obamacare in those blue states is because those are the states that already had uh, mandates in their insurance policies requiring coverage for psychiatric care, requiring coverage for maternity you know, care, requiring pre-existing conditions to be covered. And, and so as a result, these people in the blue states were already paying 50, 60, 70 percent more than we were in Texas. And so that's why those blue states, uh, those prices have gone down slightly. And the reason why we're paying more and will pay more under Obamacare is because of the mandates that have been added to insurance uh, across the rest of the country and because the federal government is going to restrict the the cost, the, excuse me, restricted the amount that they pay for insurance, and instead of increasing the supply of, of medical providers, so <clears throat> I uh, I want to I want to pause here a minute because I just want to I know we kind of reorder reorder it in five minutes. Okay, fine. Um, I want to go in, let's go into the political strategy a little bit. And uh, we're going to save questions to the end, or how are we going to do this? Okay, save questions. I got to take it. Thank you. Um, we're save questions to the end. Um, the political strategy. Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, I think, were absolutely right in trying to uh, filibuster the original uh, funding bill, the original CR that went to the floor of the Senate. They knew that they did not have. Um, over 40 votes to sustain that filibuster. They knew that going in. What I didn't like and what I thought was one of the worst political decisions in John Cornyn's career was the decision that he made with Mitch McConnell to basically knock the legs out from under Cruz and Lee and give the Democrats a political out. Politically, that just changed the whole topic of conversation from a debate about Obamacare to a debate about funding the government. So this battle that we've, the battlefield that we've chosen to fight Obamacare on, let's talk about the, uh, the funding battle. This is a much better place to have a, a, a fight, much better battleground than a argument over increasing the debt ceiling. Because I think that the, uh, the effects of a government shutdown, the effects of 30% you know, of government employees being furloughed, and we're going to hear stories out the wazoo, you know how the press likes to play it up, but <clears throat> the effects are going to be minim minimal to most of the American people. We just went through a $1 trillion budget sequester, and, and I, just, I just haven't heard anybody complaining all that much about it in the last you know, three or four months. This will be worse. It, we, you know, there may be political damage to the Republican Party and conservative causes. I really can't predict, you know, that. But I can tell you that now that we're in this battle and that the House has sent three CRs over to the Senate, first we had a debate about whether to defund Obamacare. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a bad Republican message. So the first thing we did is have a debate about, de about defunding Obamacare. Then we had a debate about whether or not we should delay the implementation of all of Obamacare. Now we're going to have a debate a week later about whether or not we should eliminate the individual mandate, which is nothing more than a tax on Obamacare. So we've had, we have, sh we have, the, the message has just been, and the politics has been, the, and the strategy has been three verbs in a row. Um, bad, bad, just bad. You pick one and you stick with it. 
And if you lose on principle, you lose on principle. That's okay. That's right. That that's perfectly fine. Because the battle is never over. And is the, you know, the great prime minister in the 20th century of Great Britain uh, said at the time that uh, nations can recover from defeat, but they can never recover from surrender. And, and, and so, and that applies to conservatives, those that call themselves conservatives, members of the Republican Party, it applies to everyone. It is too late now to back down. The last thing that we want to occur is for Republicans in the House to fold like a cheap suit and throw in the towel. That will be politically miserable for us. We, we have to be able to accomplish some objective, walk away with something, and not fold on this. I am much happier about fighting this battle on the funding of the federal government than I would be about fighting this battle over extending the debt ceiling because the ramifications of, you can't bluff on the debt ceiling. Markets won't let you bluff on the debt ceiling. And I think that the debt ceiling fight should be limited to just budgetary battles, arguments over sequester like, like we had in 2011. So, uh, look, I don't, want to, I don't want to monopolize everyone's time. But I do want to tell you that, um, you know, we have uh, a number of initiatives going on at Americans for Prosperity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you'll check out a website called justexemptme.com, you will see who has got exemptions from a president. And you'll notice it's members of his political coalition for the most part. In fact, if you go to our website, you will see that the one congressional district that has received the most exemptions is Nancy Pelosi's congressional district, where 20% of the restaurants and 20% of the nightclubs in her district have all re received exemptions. So I encourage you to check that out. Americans for Prosperity is a grassroots organization dedicated to reducing the size, the cost, and the scope of state, federal, and local governments. So we try to work with Tea Party groups. We try to assist where we can and provide whatever support we can to further that objective. And so I just want to thank everybody uh, for inviting me this evening. Remember, it's about sending a message to Washington, D.C., and supporting those politicians that are willing to stand by their principles and put their careers and their jobs and their sacred honor on the line and do what they said they were going to do when they were elected. They need to hear from you and they need to know that they're not out there on an <laughs> island. So pick up the phone, text them, tweet them, email them. There are all sorts of ways to support them, but do it because they need to hear if we don't want them to fold, they need to hear. And thank you very much. I'll be around later for whenever we have questions and answers. And uh, I also appreciate you listening to uh, 700 KSCD, The Voice of Texas. Thank you very much.